Let's have a look at where this is all headed. Remember that we were saying that wouldn't it be nice if we could come up with a sequence of unitary matrices such that applying those from the left to matrix A leaves us with an upper triangular matrix, let's call it R. Hmm. Well, let's look at the first step towards that. Obviously, we've spent some time on talking about householder transformations, so maybe householder transformations are the answer. And how might that work? Well, here we have depicted a 5 by 4 matrix, where each of these x's here is meant to denote an element of the matrix. And what we're going to do is compute a householder transform in such a way that this matrix ends up with zeros below the first entry. Okay. Now, if we view this matrix by its columns, A0, A1, and so forth, then we know that applying H0 to that matrix just leaves us with a matrix where the first column is replaced by H0 times A0, the second column is replaced by H0 times A1, and so forth. So what we're really saying is we want a householder transform such that this first column right here is transformed into a multiple, a scalar multiple of the first standard basis vector. Hmm, I guess I need to go a little further here. Okay, now how do we get there? Well, let's turn this into a little bit more generic problem. And let's call this first column here the vector x. I know it gets a little confusing of the x's that are used here and then the vector x that we're using. But, you know, it's kind of tradition to go and put these x's down for a generic matrix. So we're going to have to live with that. So the problem that we really want to answer is what householder transform H transforms a vector x into the vector beta times E0, where, notice, H preserves length, and therefore we know that the absolute value of beta must be equal to the two norm of X. Okay. So how can we draw this? Well, we can say here's our vector X. Let's say that here is the vector E0. We want to mirror that into a multiple of E0. And therefore we want to figure out what the mirror is that performs the reflection. That's our picture. Now, the approach was to say we first compute what this vector v is from, from here to here. And that vector we knew was equal to x minus y, but now y is equal to beta times e0. Okay? And then our vector u, which is our joystick, is just v divided by the length of v. Alright? Now, one possibility would be to say, okay, our vector v is equal to, now let's write our vector x as its individual entries, chi 0, chi 1, through chi m minus 1. And notice that we want to subtract off, well, one possibility would be to pick beta to be the two norm of x. So you could say which of course means that all you need to do is change the first element of the vector x after you compute its two norm. 
Now, another possibility is to pick this first entry here, beta, to be the negative of the two norm of x. Another possibility is to multiply the two norm of x by any complex scalar that has absolute value equal to 1. All of those are valid ones. Now, if we restrict ourselves to real valued vectors, then it would be either plus or minus this. So we could expose that. And notice what that means is that v is equal to x minus plus the two norm of x times e0. Okay. Hmm. What happens if we take the, um, the negative here, well, what happens then is the simple observation that you can place a mirror right here and reflect the vector x to the negative of the two norm of x times e0. Okay, so in, in the real domain, those are two possibilities for picking your mirror. And it turns out sometimes there is an advantage to picking one versus the other, and we'll discuss that shortly. But now what we have is a simple formula for computing our vector v, from which we can then compute our vector u, so that i minus 2u u Hermitian transpose times x is equal to beta times 0. And with that, we can make the first step towards reducing A to an upper triangular matrix. You might already say, wait, that's not really going to be an upper triangular matrix because it's not a square matrix. Well, we're going to end up with an upper triangle with some zeros below it.